So in this video, we're going to talk about how to self-shoot. So this starts from choosing what character you're going to be all the way to editing of your photos. And it's going to be a lot of how to set up a backdrop and things of that sort that are going to make your photos look a little more professional, even if you don't have all the professional materials and equipment. A lot of you might think, well, there's really no reason to self-shoot. There's tons of photographers out there and they know way better than I do. And while that might be true, you could be like me where I live in an area there's not a lot of photographers around that do cosplay photography. I'm actually one of the photographers that do it and I know of just a couple others here and our schedules don't always match up. So I got into self-shooting because then I could first off fulfill my perfectionism <laughs> with my cosplay photos, but also because I could do more without having to take on other people's schedules or try and balance it out with the weather and everything. Let's get into the one that everybody thinks is the biggest part of photography, your equipment. Now, a lot of people will say you have to have a DSLR, you have to have a professional camera. You don't. You can do not necessarily the same, but you can get good photos with a point and shoot, with a cell phone, the equipment that you probably already have lying around. And you just need a couple other things. So if you're using a cell phone or a point and shoot, you probably need a tripod that's going to handle the mounting that you need. Cell phones are going to take different tripod mounts than say a DSLR or a point and shoot camera. Point and shoot cameras and DSLRs usually just have a little screw that fits in the bottom and that comes with the tripod. So just make sure you get a tripod that's going to work with the equipment you have. On top of that, I also recommend having a mirror handy. This is really good for self-shooting, especially if you don't have a screen that you can see yourself in as you're taking photos or video. Um, I use a mirror because my camera doesn't have one of those rotating LED screens or LCD screens. Uh, so this way I can check to make sure my wig's in the right spot, the outfit's sitting right, and that my makeup looks okay. And I can also practice poses and expressions to make sure the photos turn out as best I can before I go look at them on the camera. You should also have some sort of remote or timer for your camera. On cell phones, you usually have a timer. You can tell it, uh, some of them you can even just snap and they'll take a photo or something like that. Um, for DSLR cameras, you can buy a little wireless remote, which I recommend. And I set my camera onto remote with a timer so that I have time to either drop the remote or I can hide it somewhere on me so that it's not visible. The other thing that's really important is how you choose to do your lighting. I recommend when you're starting out to go with natural light because it's probably one of the easiest to start working with. Um, so that would usually be using a window, going outdoors, or setting your camera for a lower light situation and shooting inside. I use, I have used outdoor lighting. I have used indoor lights that aren't always that pretty. <laughs> They're hard to combat sometimes. I have used standing lights and I have used flash. I've also used studio lights. Uh, my favorite actually right now is a standing light situation, and I will link that below. Um, I found it fantastic because you can move it around and physically change the lighting for your photo. I'm actually using one of the lights right now. I have a ring LED light, <laughs> which is why this looks so nicely lighted. I think it's really important to keep in mind what kind of lighting you're going to use because it will affect what poses you can do. It will affect what area and space you need for it and it will affect the mood of the photos. If you wanna go for a lower light situation or you want to blast it with light, you're gonna to have to have the space and the capabilities to be able to do that. As you're getting ready for all this and you're deciding everything, I highly recommend going online and looking at other cosplayers, looking at reference art and character things from the show or the series that you're cosplaying from as well as looking at model photos. Pinterest is really good for this, or you can go onto DeviantArt for those that still do that, or you can even just Google search. These are gonna give you ideas to fall back on when you're not sure what to do pose-wise anymore and you're standing in front of a camera, the lights are all facing you, and that panic hits. Once you've got everything sorted out, you've got some ideas in mind, it's time to start looking at what kind of backdrop you're going to do. Are you going to shoot outdoors? Are you going to shoot in front of a blank wall so you just want a neutral background? Do you want to do a backdrop, a green screen? You can also use poster board. I've used fabric. There are so many different ways you can do it. It just depends on how you want it to look. So for me, I've done ones where I take my camera and my tripod out, I use natural light, and I just go out into a field and shoot photos of myself. Looks very strange to people walking by, I'm certain, but the photos look nice. I've also done just a blank wall for my Nurse Joy. 
Uh, we just shot right in front of it. I just cleaned up some of the imperfections on the wall after the fact. Uh, I, I use backdrops almost religiously, <laughs> including green screen. So I have a faux wood backdrop. I uh, sometimes use curtains, uh, black backdrop, white backdrop, kind of a little bit of everything. I've even just gone to the dollar store and picked up poster boards that you would use for like school projects and just taped them up on the wall behind me to create photos. And sometimes I use electrical tape to add details to them, things like that. You can get really creative when it comes to the backdrop portion of it. One thing you can do to kind of spice up a background is to add props and furniture into the shot that matches the final shot you want to get. So for instance, I did a Yasha shoot with a simple backdrop and then we put flowers all over me. So this was kind of a prop we added in to replicate some artwork by Courtney on Twitter. And this turned out really good because I was still the focal point, but it had a lot of extra around me that kind of brought the attention back in and it created this beautiful cohesive image in the end. If you're going to have a big prop or a little props, make sure to keep that in mind when you're planning everything out because you know, sometimes anime characters have like huge massive swords. You're gonna have to have the space for that and you probably need a backdrop that's going to cover the full height of it unless you wanna do a lot of post editing. Now we're getting to the shooting part. You've set up your backdrop, you've got your costume on, you've got pose ideas and everything. Here are some tips and tricks for when you actually get to the shooting part, because this can be the hardest part of everything and the most time consuming. <laughs> so I always say shoot wide, crop after. So that means take a wider picture than you need with more space around you, and you can always crop it down after. It's much better than taking a photo you love a part of your hand is cut out or you're cut off the top of your head or just your feet are cut out. So if you go wider, you can always make it a little bit smaller to get the look that you want. While you're shooting, make sure you constantly look back at the photos. Zoom in on them on the back of your camera. Make sure that it's in focus. The things you like are where they're supposed to be. You don't have, you know, hair in your eyes or you're like half blinking in a photo. You want to catch that before you get to the editing stage because it's going to save you so much more time. What I usually do when I'm shooting, just because it does get a little awkward to be on my own in silence, taking weird photos of myself, <laughs> is I like to put on music. So generally I'll put on music that matches the character or that gives me the mood I'm kind of going for in the photos. For instance, when I shot my spider Gwen on my own, I did flashes for all of it and I played the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, which is pretty freaking good. And it's a lot of like heavy beats and fast music and it really got me pumped for the shoot. But when I did my Caleb Widogast project, I made sure I played really sad music that made me cry because I wanted to get a crying look. And apparently Moana was the way to do that. And remember, simplicity is usually better, especially when you're just starting out on this. You don't want to add a lot of complex pieces in that are going to be really hard to work with for your final photo. Most importantly, the and the best thing about self-shooting is you can ignore every photo you don't like from the set. If you decide you don't like any of them, that's perfectly fine. It happens. I've done entire shoots where I almost throw every single photo out because I absolutely hate how they turn out. It's trial and error and you're going to learn what your best angles are, which side of your face looks best in certain lighting, and it's really important to go through that discovery. It's going to help you with other photographers. It's going to help you even in selfies. And it's going to help your own photos of yourself look a lot better. When it comes to the final stage of editing the photos, the first thing I always do is clean up any facial blemishes, any wrinkles in costumes that I can that aren't supposed to be there, and then clear out distracting elements from the background. I find even just doing that can make a huge difference in a photo. From there, I generally lighten up the eyes so that they're more visible, change the color if need be, and then I will do dodge and burn on the face to bring out the stronger features. So usually it'll be on the cheekbones, on the bridge of the nose, and along the jawline. From there, I start looking at the background. Do I need to change any colors in it? Do I need to clone out any pieces because they're too big, or there's a person in the background, or somebody forgot to take their con badge off? I've had that many times, <laughs> if you're at a convention. So generally, it's facial cleanup, making sure the outfit looks right, and then I'll clean up the background or replace the background if need be. 
I try to do facial cleanup and everything first just because that's going to be my main focus and I don't want to see what the photo looks like with say a blemish on my face when I'm trying to figure out the final colorization of it. I want to see that nice and clean so I can get an idea of what the final photo is going to look like. I want to thank all my patrons for making this video and so many of the costumes I do possible. It honestly means so much to me that everyone has come together to help me out and give opinions and just always offering advice, life advice and everything. It's like our little community and I absolutely love it. If you liked this video and you want to see more, let me know down in the comments and hit that subscribe button.